I had everything. I got the car, I bought the house, worked my way up to vice president. I had just closed the biggest deal in this company's history. After this, they'd make me a partner. We're going to let you go, Jim. It's going to be better for all of us if you're not here. Well, I didn't know you had any other passions besides finance. Sure, I did. Plenty of things. Just need to find out what they are. What can I get you? Uh, orange juice, white with cheese, and an application. What do you mean? You want to work here? Are you still hiring? We're always hiring. It's my third time working here. From working at a hedge fund to waiting tables at a Waffle House, the financial crash of 2008 changed many lives, including that of my next guest. He went from a six-figure salary in finance to making two thirteen an hour, plus tips. He wrote about the experience. It's now a movie. It's called Waffle Street. James Adams with me, James. We're glad to have you here. It's quite a story. So after you were laid off in 2009, what made you apply to the Waffle House? I'm assuming you had some money saved up? Yeah, I had some money saved up. The reason I applied to Waffle House was because McDonald's wouldn't hire me. I tried two or three times to get on there, but no dice. All right, no dice. Did you ever get feedback, or they just didn't think you would show up? or? I, I don't know what problems McDonald's had with me. They never said, but uh, Waffle House took me right off the street. So let me ask you, James, it seems like from parts of your book that I read, you feel somewhat guilty about your role in the financial crisis. Uh, everybody probably has seen um, Michael Lewis's movie this year. I mean, did you take that job as a kind of penance? I think I needed to clear my head. I don't know that I took the job initially as a kind of penance, but I think a lot of the idea of uh, penance came out as I started writing it. Yes. So did you understand the work that you were doing at the time? I know you talked a lot about the toxic products. I mean, because, and I'm asking legitimately because after the crisis, a lot of people said, you know what, I didn't really realize what I was selling. I was just told to sell. Yeah, I think the way I categorize it is we were ready for a Category 5 storm, and we got hit with the tsunami. Uh, we knew that the housing market was frothy, uh, but we also knew that given our positioning, uh, for us to lose money, the whole financial system would have to be insolvent, and that's effectively where we were at in November of 2008. So having been a white-collar worker and then having worked for 213 an hour plus tips, where do you stand on minimum wage? Oh, well, I think it really depends on the state. It's hard to uh, make blanket uh, statements about what the minimum wage should be in any given area because things are so different from one locale to another. So let me ask you, James, before we let you go, yes or no, are you surprised that no bankers have gone to jail over the crisis? No, I'm not really surprised, okay. and I think that's because when everyone's guilty, no one is, and that's really where we're at. James? Everyone was in on it. We thank you.